What's up, friends? It's Angela again. I was just talking to my friend Kayla in New Braunfels. Her sister was dropping her off at school and got pulled over for speeding in a school zone. She's gonna have to pay a huge fine. But I was telling Kayla that I think I have an idea that just might get her sister out of that ticket. Wanna hear what I told her? Sweet. All right, here's what the officer wrote. Read carefully because maybe you'll see what I'm seeing. It says her sister was speeding 50 kilometers an hour from Butcher to Nacogdoches. Can you tell why I think Kayla's sister can get off on a technicality? Now, don't get me wrong. If you ask me, anyone that goes too fast in a school zone probably should pay a huge fine. But still, I think she might have a case. The first thing I had to tell Kayla about was how to tell the difference between speed, velocity, and acceleration. These are three crazy important terms to know about when you're talking about motion. Let's talk about speed first. Cool? All right, speed is a distance some object travels at a certain time. So let's see that definition. We pretty much know all about speed from the real world. If the bus takes like, I don't know, a whole hour to go seven miles from my house to the school, that means it's going seven miles an hour. My older brother can throw a fastball at 70 miles an hour. That means that at, a, at that rate, the baseball would be 70 miles away after one hour. That's like from New Braunfels to Austin. So do you remember what the police officer recorded for Kayla's sister? Look again. He said the rate was 50 kilometers an hour. That is definitely too fast to go in a school zone. So according to the ticket, that was how fast she was speeding. Hmm. Well, if an object never changes its speed as it travels its distance, then we call that constant speed. Let's write that down. If an object keeps going at the same rate, it has a constant speed. Well, think again about the school bus. Does it have a constant speed? Does it go exactly seven miles an hour from my house to the school? No way, it takes so long because we're always stopping and going. The bus is speeding up and slowing down the whole way. So even though the bus doesn't have a constant speed, we can still calculate its average speed. That's an average rate an object has as it covers a distance. Well, that's speed. What about velocity? Most people I know think that speed and velocity are the same, but technically they're not. Velocity is the measurement of speed as it goes in a certain direction. So to know an object's velocity, you have to know two things, how fast it's going and from where to where. So think about my brother on the pitcher's mound. We know his fastball has an average speed of 70 miles an hour, but what else do we need to know to figure out velocity? Yeah, the direction. So what could we add to calculate velocity? Yes, we could say he throws the ball 70 miles an hour from the mound to home plate. So can you tell the difference? Let's practice. I'll think of some examples and you differentiate between speed and velocity. How about this one? Marcus ran the length of the basketball court in 9.4 seconds. Speed or velocity? Right, well, we know the distance and time, but not the direction. So that's speed, right? Good. What about this one? Leslie moves her desk over two squares to the left in like two seconds. Distance and time? Check. Direction? Yep, so speed or velocity? Good, it's velocity. All right, what about this one? You know those math problems that are like a travel, a train traveled from blah, blah, blah at a speed of whatever? Yeah, which is that, speed or velocity? Okay, well, we have a rate and direction, so it's velocity again. Okay, let's do one more. What about a 100 gram ball moving one meter in one second? Well, we don't know the direction, so which is it? Yes, it's speed, good job. Pretty simple, right? Let's look at the traffic citation again. Hmm, is that speed or velocity? Yeah, it's velocity because the officer knew the direction of Kayla, Kayla's sister's motion. So technically, she wasn't speeding, she was velocitying. Okay, yeah, there's no way she's getting out of this ticket. All right, so now can we practice calculating average speed? Good. Like if my school bus was traveling, I don't know, seven miles in an hour, it's going seven miles an hour. 
I just take the distance traveled and divide by the time it took. So here's the formula. Could you calculate the average speed of the bus in metric? The bus traveled 11.3 kilometers in 60 minutes. What was its average speed? Well, all we do is take 11.3 and divide by 60. So the answer is... 60. Don't forget the units. Now you try this one. If a basketball court is 28.65 meters and Marcus ran it in 9.4 seconds, what was his average speed? Yeah, divide the distance by the time and you get the speed. And the answer is, drum roll please. Yes, three meters per second. But here's the deal. We know that the bus isn't traveling at a constant speed. It's always speeding up and slowing down. Same with Marcus. He's gonna get faster and faster at the beginning and probably slow down at some point. So one last thing to talk about is acceleration. When an object increases or decreases velocity or changes its direction, which means it's accelerating. So whenever the bus starts speeding up again from the last stop, it's accelerating. When it slows down in a certain direction for some kid, it has a negative acceleration. You could say it's decelerating. When Marcus turns around and changes direction at the baseline, he's accelerating because his velocity is changing. So what's another example? Well, if you push a shopping cart toward the shopping cart collector thing in the parking lot, what happens? Yeah, it'll go fast at first and then slow down due to friction. It has a high acceleration at the beginning. Or that train from Chicago winding through the countryside. Well, I guess every time it changes direction, that means it has acceleration. And that's it. That's acceleration. Okay, so that's how we can describe motion in our lives. We can describe an object's speed or its velocity, and if its velocity is changing, we can talk about its acceleration. Well, I guess that does it for me. So until next time, it's Angela saying, slow and steady wins the race. Bye, y'all.